Well hello and welcome back to the Rescue Saga workshop and this week we're looking again at the Myford ML7. I bought this about two months ago and I've been doing a bit of work to bring it back up to a real high quality functioning condition. It was obviously fully working when I bought it but it's lived a life, it's now what 70 years old so it was time to do a bit of work. In this episode I'm fixing up the work bank, I've put new belts on it, we are working through the lubrication, I've added a wheel here on the lead screw and other bits and pieces as well. So let's get stuck in and show you what I've done. Okay, so this is the uh, lamp that came off the back of the lathe. On here is a three pin socket type plug um, and the other end of that so it sits in behind the motor and then it's wired directly into the switch there's the socket there hanging down what i'm going to do is run the wire straight from the bulb down through here i'm not going to wire it into the switch because uh, i suspect the switch is as old as the lathe and the man who sold me this did say that there was a short and i'm suspecting the switch so i'm going to wire the bulb straight down leave this long bolt the lamp back on the lathe and then connect the wire into the switch which then means whenever the whole thing is plugged into the wall the lamp will always be on and then that way at night whenever I leave the garage I'll know the lamp is on and that'll mean that I won't forget to turn the whole thing off because of ancient wiring I don't want to give any risk to fire or anything like that so the lamp is always going to be on. Um, I bought these LED bulbs off Amazon they were pretty cheap I think it's 20 watts, yep, which apparently is equivalent of 150 to 200 watt bulb, so nice and bright. And that will fit in here. And the cheapest cable that I could find, I bought this stuff off eBay, but I didn't buy enough of it. And um, it's nice and vintage looking, if you can see it from camera, if it's nice and braided. I thought that would have been quite cool. Um, I'll maybe redo it someday and that stuff, but what I'm going to do is sacrifice an extension cord. This is an IKEA extension cord, seven pounds for five meters, which is cheaper than um, five meters of three core cable from a hardware shop. So sacrifice the plug and the socket, they can stay in case I need them for something else, but I'm going to use the cable, wire this in here, and then whatever else I'll use for another project coming up soon. So yeah, it's going to be white cable, it's not just going to be as pretty, but it'll do in the meantime. This always needs a bit of a clean up here, it's just dirt, and then we'll be good to go. Purely for logistics, I have screwed the lamp temporarily onto my workbench. I've removed the old brown wire, which is looking slightly worse for wear. Um, there was no earth attached to the metalwork of the lamp itself, so I'm just trying to figure out how to do that discreetly. So that's out. I have fed the wire into here, so that's my free end that's going to go to this switch right here and it's attached in here and now I'm just running it up through the lamp up to the bulb end and then I'll work out how to put the earth in. And I'm very glad to say it works. So now when I switch it on at the wall it's directly wired through the power feed to the motor straight into the lamp. The little switch down here does not work, that's okay. Um, the white wire actually doesn't look too bad on there. Brown maybe would have been nicer but that's fine and I've checked the lathe and it's still working as well so big improvement and I'm sure you'll agree that's nice bright light um, it's a wee bit more white than I would necessarily like quite like sort of the warmer white light but those bulbs will do fine and it's super bright which is exactly what I wanted and now I won't leave the garage without leaving turning the lathe on so let's have a look at some other bits and pieces I've been doing the next thing I'm going to do is to change these drive belts. So don't quite think this is original, um, but I understand why it was put on. So it would mean not having to remove the spindle or this counter shaft um, and these belts sort of come apart and can be put on. But I think there's a little bit, and obviously that can be tensioned up, but it's just not quite right. This is heading on the oiler here. Um, I just think that two new belts in here and get them properly tensioned again could really benefit the machine. Um, so I'm going to have to take the counter shaft off, take this cover off, take this cover off, take the spindle off, put new belts on. That's the plan I've ordered. 
and have arrived some nice imperial elm keys which will allow me to get those off and I have to be careful about the shims in here as well for the bearings so let's give that a bash okay so that's not spinning too badly it's probably a bit more firm than I would have liked but um, it does spin quite smooth obviously have the covers off that took a bit of a struggle and what I'm going to do next yeah that must be there's a bit of a if you can hear that I suspect the bearings in the motor have seen better days so that's probably going to be a, a another project to get that in that motor probably rebuilt because I quite like its original but you can hear the motor bearings are pretty knackered there but that's okay so I'm glad the noise is coming from the motor rather than the lathe. Um, I'm going to run the motor actually here and test it out and I'll let you hear that with obviously no load and then what we're going to have to do is work out how to get this shaft off to get the drive belt over this. As you can hear the motor is a bit noisy. So I have the counter shaft off, I have my new belt from Myford here and I'm going to pop that in here, put the counter shaft back on, Billy's back on, secure that all up and then I'll be ready to tackle lifting the spindle off once that's on and I'll put the new belt on the motor. Jumping forwards a bit further I have the spindle out, I've, there's the two um, bearing caps and I have the spacers marked. <coughs> Try to fit it on there but the um, belt doesn't quite fit round so I'm going to have to move this down a wee bit and that can always be adjusted out afterwards. Hey presto, <coughs> two belts on and I have followed the ML7 owner's manual here to adjust the tension on this correctly and the tension here correctly as well so that's great. Really happy, I've given it a test run, I'll show you it all then. So let's get the safety guards back on again and see what the next job is from there. These pair arrived in the post today. Um, two little oilers for the top of the lathe. Now these are slightly different to each other, um, but what I'm hoping to do is to make two good ones out of four slightly dodgy ones. Um, if we look over here at the lathe, the plastics have seen better days. I think the plastic in this one is cracked. Um, but if I can make, and this one here is missing a few bits, so if I can make two decent ones out of four okay ones, then I think we'll be on to a winner. So let's get these two off, get them over in the bench and confirm what we've bought and see if I can make it all work. Alas, <coughs> I chickened out. I did try and take the other ones apart and incorporate these two, but they're quite different inside, so I've just opted to put these in two whole ones on as well, as they're completely leak-proof. I tested them before they go on, and it's quite easy to adjust the dip rate, and they appear to be holding oil as well. Um, maybe this one less so than this one, but um, they've now been sitting on there for about a week or so as I've made this video in stages, and they're holding by and large, so quite pleased with that. Um, I think they're in keeping with the whole lathe used, good condition, not perfect. Um, so maybe we'll wrap that video up here. Bonus content for those of you who have stayed on. Um, one other little modification that you may have noticed here is this lead screw hand wheel and I got this obviously in the Imperial um, because this machine is Imperial. Um, hand wheel and the little pointer I got off eBay um, used. It could have bought a new one but I thought it would be again in keeping with the machine and I have bought this really with the income of this channel so um, that is a good example of why it's good to hit the subscribe like comment and build the channel because it allows me to do things like this and i really appreciate your support just even for that reason alone thanks very much for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it it was a bit all over the place but i've shot this video in a couple of segments across a space of time but i've joined them all together and hopefully you enjoyed that seeing the work i've done 
As I'm sure you've gathered, I'm quite new to this. I've never owned a lathe, I've never even used a lathe, and I'm prepared to learn. I have bought quite a number of books, doing plenty of reading on it, and I'd really appreciate all the hints, tips, questions, suggestions. Fire them all in the comments below and give the video a like. You can also hit the subscribe button and follow this particular journey, as well as all the other projects that I'm working on, the Land Rover, the Toy Lander, all the other things you see here on the channel. This one here is going to be a particular journey, and I'm sure you would really enjoy following it along. So once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you again next week. Cheerio!